You find in this tutorial how to couple your physical model to an external circuit like the one that is shown here where an electrostatic capacitor is coupled to an external circuit, how to run your coupled model in time and frequency domains, how to show two variables on the same plot as two y-axis, and how to plot the magnitude and phase response of a filter in the frequency domain. Be with me in this tutorial. If you recall, we have reached this point. We executed a frequency domain study. And now I want to couple my capacitor with an external electrical circuit and perform both the time domain and the frequency domain study. Uh, let me first uh, delete all previous results. And here in the material, I want to define the epsilon as a pure number, not a function, okay? Now we are ready to add the new physics electrical circuit. For that, right click on component, click on add physics, and here under the ACDC, you can see here the electrical circuit. You can just double click on it, or for example, add to component one, you can here see that an electrical circuit is added to the component. Notice that in these situations, both physics, which in this case is electrostatics and electrical circuit, are solved together by the software. Therefore, the software solves the whole system in the same time. Okay, I close add physics. Now I want to define the elements of my circuit. But beforehand, we should review how the circuit is defined in the console multi physics. Here you can see the circuit that I want to simulate. I want to have a DC voltage source with a magnitude of 1000 volts in series with a resistor 10 kilo ohm and in series with that resistor we want to place our capacitor but in the geometry domain not a lumped capacitor but a capacitor that we can calculate electric field electric voltage and so on in its dump. To define such a circuit we should name the nodes of the circuit. Look at this is Catch. We have three nodes in this circuit. The node that is connected to the ground is set to zero as a default in the software. There is another node which is between the voltage source and the resistor. I have named it one and the node between the capacitor and the resistor. I have named it two. Using these numbers, you can define where the electric circuit elements are placed. For example, I should add a voltage source and define for the software that the voltage source is placed between node 0 and node 1. And the resistor is placed between node 1 and 2 and my capacitor, which is the electrostatic physics, uh, is placed between 2 and 0. Let's define this circuit in the software. If you click on the ground node, you can see that the node name is zero, just like the picture that you saw. Right click on electrical circuit and here you can find the voltage source. I want this voltage source to be between node zero and one and the plus side should be connected to node one. Therefore, I defined node P as one and node N as zero. It is a general source. You don't need to change it. And I just set the amount of voltage to 1000 volts. I right click again electrical circuit and add a resistor. I want this resistor to be between node 1 and 2 and I come back here and set P as node 1 and set node N as 2. Two. This arrow means that when the current is shown positive, the current flows from P to N. I set the resistor to 10,000 ohm or 10 kilo ohm. And now I want to connect the circuit to my capacitor. For this, I come here to electrostatics under the terminal. If you come here under the terminal type, besides voltage and charge, there is another option that says circuit. If you choose the circuit, it says connect to external I VSU or external I terminal in the electrical circuit. If you set 
the terminal type to circuit, you can select this as an external device in the electrical circuit. I use this option external IVSU. I right click on electrical circuit. Here you can see external couplings, external IVSU. And if you come here, first you should define the nodes. If you look at here, the capacitor is placed between the node 2 and 0. I set it to 2 and set this node to 0. And under the external device, you should select which device should be connected to this circuit. And if you click here, you can find here the terminal voltage. It is the same as the terminal here. If I disable this one, you can see that the option goes away. If I come back and set it to circuit, you can find it again. And now the physics options is complete and the capacitor is connected to an external circuit. Okay, I set the meshing to extremely fine and come here to study. First, I want to simulate the time dependent. I disable the frequency domain and enable the time dependent. Let's see what time steps should we use. If we recall, the amount of our capacitor is 35 picofar and it is in series with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Therefore, the time constant of this RC circuit equals 0.3 microseconds. It takes four or five time constants till the circuit reaches its steadiest state. If I do this, I get 1.7 microsecond. Therefore, it's not a bad idea to simulate our circuit till 2 microseconds and in, for example, 100 nanoseconds or 10 nanoseconds steps. I just come back to console set my time unit to nanosecond, click here on the replace, I start from zero, the steps can be for example 50 nanoseconds and the stop 2000 nanoseconds which is 2 microseconds. Okay, everything is in place, now we can compute our model. Okay, the results are here. I want to plot the capacitor voltage versus time and the capacitor current to see the exponential change of that parameter versus time. For that, I just click on results, right click, add a 1D plot group and under that I add a global. In the global, you can see that the x-axis is set to time in nanoseconds in default and the thing that I want to plot if you come here in the electrostatics, you can see here terminals. You can just plot the terminal voltage, but I go another way. I come here under the electrical circuit. Here you can see the node voltages. And if you recall, the node of the capacitor is node 2. Therefore, I select this and click plot. You can see here completely the exponential change of the capacitor voltage and it reaches 1000 volt in the steady state. This is the exact thing that we expected from a capacitor in an RC set. Now I want to add the capacitor current also here, but I do something interesting. I add another global here and come here under the electrical circuit, under the device and here is IVSU, this is our capacitor, and I select current through device. I plot it, let's disable global one. Okay, here you can see that it starts from 0.1 ampere and goes to zero in the steady state. This is also the thing that we expected from an RC cell. If I want to plot both variables alongside in the same plot, you can see that one of them is very large and the other one is very small. For this, you can come here under 1D plot and here there's an option 2Y axis. If you click this, you can not set one of these global 1 or 2 on the second Y axis. I want capacitor voltage to be on the left side and global 2 the capacitor current to be on the right side. If you click on this, you can see a very interesting graph here. The blue one is the voltage at node 2. This arrow says that the left y-axis is for the voltage and the green one is the current through device, which is the capacitor current. And this arrow says that right 
right axis is for the current values. Okay, very well. I now want to simulate this circuit in the frequency domain and see the filtering effect of an RC circuit. For this I come here and disable the time dependent and enable the frequency domain. Let's come back and do some calculations. In an RC circuit or an RC filter, the 3 dB cut frequency equals 1 over 2 pi multiplied by RC. The RC is 0.3 microseconds, which I substituted here. And if you do this, you get 450 kilohertz approximately. Therefore, I think it's a good idea to simulate the circuit till, for example, 2000 kHz. Let's come back here in the frequency domain. The frequency unit is kHz, it's okay. I select on replace. I go from 1 to 2000 kHz and 100 steps per decade is okay. I click on replace. If you want to plot the parameters like the phase of variables, it's a good practice to come here under the voltage source and set it to an AC source. Here you can set the phase, I let it be zero and then you can come here and select compute to get your results. If you look at the circuit, the transfer function of this filter would be the voltage on node 2 divided by the voltage on node 1 which is 1000 volt. Therefore I plot the capacitor voltage divided by 1000 to get the transfer function of this filter because this is the output of my filter. Okay the results are ready. I just come here. I haven't changed anything and you can see that by default the x-axis are set to the frequency in kilohertz. I do not need this one, I just disable it. And here I plot the voltage at node 2, which is the capacitor voltage divided by 1000. Let's plot it. And I also disable the option to Y axis and set the X and Y axis to logarithmic scale. If you look at here, you can see that you have a low pass filter. In the low frequencies, the filter passes all the signal and in higher frequencies, it blocks the signal. Okay, I come here and I do something interesting. Let's just uh, bring the plot back to linear mode. And I want to plot the DB diagram. For this, I should calculate the 20 times the logarithm of the transfer function. Here I type 20 multiplied by log 10. Here I need a parenthesis and I click on plot. This is the dB scale. And for convenience, I can, for example, come here and set the x axis on the log scale, but the y axis is already the log scale because I have calculated the logarithm. And I come here to minus 3 dB to see the cut frequency of my filter. And here you can find 448. And if I come back to my calculations, I can see here that is 449. And here is 448. They are almost the same. If you want to see the whole diagram, again, you can just click on here, zoom extends, and this is your diagram. If you want to see the phase of this voltage, I come here and enable the second global and enable also the 2y axis. Come here, I replace it with the voltage as in at node 2 and the console recognize the ARG, the argument, as a function to calculate the phase of a variable. If I do this, it defines it as radian. And if I plot this, you can see here the change of the phase in the green one. And if you want to be as degree, you can just multiply it by 180 and divide it by pi, plot it. And we know that in the 3 dB cut frequency, the phase lag of the output should be 45 degree. Here you can can find 45 degree and if you zoom this I do it again here is 45 and you can see 449 the amount that we have calculated from the analytical formula and you can see 
very simply that both the magnitude of a transfer function and the phase of a transfer function can be plotted on a diagram in the frequency domain study. Okay, that's enough for this video. If you have found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like this so YouTube shows this video to more people. Moreover, if you want to catch all my upcoming videos, don't forget to subscribe the channel and also click the notification bell. Take care and see you in my next video.